what's going on? I want to say thank you to everyone that bought training. And I want to say thank you to everyone that's about to buy training. And shout out to the Nerd Tribe. Something very interesting is starting to happen. Google the number of Silicon Valley companies that are laying off people and it is getting to be more and more of these companies now the broader a company economy they're adding jobs but these silicon valley companies such as amazon um meta stripe they're laying off people now i feel that this is part of a larger problem. If you will look at the stock market and these companies are called FANG companies, Facebook, Apple, um, they compose a very large percentage of certain indexes. And what I feel, what we're just seeing is the beginning. These companies have been insulated due to investor money for a long, long time. And now we're seeing real market force places start to impact these companies that were not impacted before. I feel that this is just the beginning. Many of these companies like take Uber. Uber doesn't make any money. Take DoorDash. DoorDash doesn't make any money. Now, when I say they don't make any money, they have ongoing revenue. These companies are in the marketplace. They're generating revenue. When I say that they don't make money, they don't, they're not profitable. They're not making a profit. And let's go ahead and say you started a small business and you had your mom, you had your dad, you had your Uncle Joe, you had some friends and families invest in your company. And every time you ran out of money, you went back to the family for them to reinvest in your company. Then one day you went to your family and they are like, we don't have any more money. This is the place that I feel that many of these companies are facing. Their the investors just don't believe in these companies anymore because how long can you be in business and not make a profit. Give you an example. Amazon.com reinvested a lot of money. Amazon.com was making a healthy profit, but they chose to take that money and put it back in the company to grow the company. This isn't what's happening with these companies. Literally, they're like zombie companies. And it's just a matter of time before these companies run into financial difficulties. And uh, I put out here, when you were a kid, name all of the big companies that were around when you were a kid. And go ahead, don't just fact check me on this. I want you to look at their stock price when you were a kid. I want you to look at their stock price now. There are many large companies that were flying furious and fast, and they have not reached their all-time high stock price since it collapsed in the 2000, in the dot-com era. There are many companies that have not come back. They're still in business, they're still making money, but they're not as large as they used to be. So that's what I was talking about because let's say you had a job and your job, you were making $350,000. And then one day they come to you and they say, look, we got to cut expenses. We need to cut your income by 200K. You're still making 150. You're still in the game. You're still a six figure earner, but they've cut your salary by 200K. That is what happens to a lot of these companies. They're still in the game. They're still making money, but their earnings have been significantly downsized. And what I see reading the tea leaves is 2023 is going to be a terrible year for a lot of these companies because right now I am seeing things that I have not seen before. At the moment, Walmart, America's largest employer, the shelves are bursting with inventory and they're trying to move that inventory. For the first time ever, I've seen multiple Apple products on sale. This watch, um, it's an Apple watch. I was trying to 
get it. And one of the things I consistently saw that it wasn't going to be in stock until toward the end of this month. And I kept checking and kept checking. And I went to the Apple store and the, the watch was in stock and I was able to get same day delivery. Typically, when Apple launched a hot new product, you couldn't get it until around Christmas time. This is another indicator of where the economy is going. This is another indicator of where we are at as a nation. Now, I I see that these companies, which have already, uh, Peloton has had a multiple rounds of layoffs. So what you're going to see in 2023 are more layoffs from these large companies. Now, this is just part of the message. This is just part of what's going to happen because Right now, I am just looking at the housing market. Now, many of these companies have highly paid remote workers and highly paid employees. These are the people who are getting cut. So the housing market is going to have a massive correction in 2023. And I'm gonna give you the steps because all of this plays in a row because during the pandemic, you had many high wage workers who were like, hey, you must must work from home and they were like okay I'm leaving the state so I'm about to go somewhere where I really want to be since I get to work from home and and the like, literally many small towns have been obliterated by these high wage workers coming to buy property in their locales and just pushing the prices through the stratosphere so with real estate and once again there, I am literally seeing multiple failed Airbnbs. And this is what's funny. Uh, I live in a high rise and there's someone that has one of these units on Airbnb and it stays booked, it stays booked because I'm in Buckhead. And I was kind of like, I narked. I was like, hey, you know, there's someone written and they're like, they already knew and this person has received a message and what they're going to have to do, because essentially what they do is give you a warning and this person is not taking the unit off of Airbnb. So what they're, the next step is they're going to have to evict this person. So they're going to have an eviction on their credit because they want to do Airbnb. I say this because this, you know, looking at this place stays booked because Buckhead is a destination area. But every day I am seeing more and more failed Airbnbs in the Atlanta Metro popping up on Zillow at an exaggerated rental rate because they're fully furnished. This is the first tip. They're fully furnished. People's like, how do you know it's a failed Airbnb? Uh, let me go ahead and give you a little information. There are many companies that do corporate housing, which are furnished places for corporate executives who are going to be somewhere for six months a year. And they don't advertise on Zillow. They have their own websites. They have their own process because corporate housing is a very niche part of real estate that is very much based upon relationships, not you know, I'm going to go on Zillow and I'm going to look for this because this is why you have typically not seen fully furnished houses on Zillow. So this is my interpretation that these houses and once again, everyone drunk the Airbnb Kool-Aid. You can start an Airbnb, doesn't matter where it is and you can get three to four times what you would get from a long-term rental. I have seen multiple Airbnbs in the hood. I've seen multiple Airbnbs in the hood and there's a, a feature where you can like zoom in on the house and flip it and look around. There's this one house that they want $4,500 for and the house next door is boarded up and there are three more boarded up houses on the same street. Tell me, is that an Airbnb you would want to spend money on to be in a neighborhood with boarded houses, high drug usage, crime? Is that where you want to be for your Airbnb? And I am not surprised that this area, you know, what they did is they renovated it. It looks great on the inside, looks awesome on the inside. But here's the thing, when you're staying somewhere, you gotta leave that place and go on the outside. And that's where the problems begin. That's where a lot of the problems begin. And I've literally seen, cause what I feel is there's gonna be an Airbnb apocalypse. Cause so many people have gone ahead and put their coins together 
and got an investment property. And once again, are there people who are making money hand over fist in Airbnb? Yeah, these are people who have properties near Disney World. These are people who have properties in Vegas. These are people who have properties in Los Angeles. These are people who have properties where a lot of people are going for business or pleasure. So I feel that that Airbnb economy is going to do just fine. But let's say you're a normal person who drunk the Airbnb Kool-Aid that I can start an Airbnb in my backyard and you went ahead and you found you an investment property and then you went to the bank and you got you a mortgage and now you have this fully furnished house in the hood. How's it going? How's it going? And this, I feel, is going to be something that literally can bring down the real estate market. High interest rates are not going to do it. People are still going to buy houses with high interest rates. They're just going to come up with more money as a down payment. But when you have multiple Airbnb properties being liquidated, because like I know someone who actually he is a high income earner, has a job, makes seven figures a year. So he was able to go out and get 20 properties. And pretty much from the first few months, it was kind of funky. You know, it was just like, you know, it was like, hey, I got these properties. They're they're going, people are booking them, but the bookings weren't what people told them because they were expecting a 3X. Like if a property could get 2,000, they were expecting um, 6,000 or maybe 8,000 a month in Airbnb earnings. And it, it just never happened. And the person I know, he's a friend, he's pretty smart. And he started liquidating probably six months after he bought his 20th property. And he started liquidating when the market was banana. So he was able to make money by selling these houses because the uh, real estate market appreciated so much. So he was able to make money, but now he's stuck. He's sitting on two or three and they're just not moving. But fortunately for him, because he's like, you know, I have to pay the mortgage on this, but they made so much money off of selling the other 17 or 18 that there is a very fat bank account that they can go ahead and pay these additional mortgages and not feel any pressure whatsoever. I feel this is a rare example of people who got into the Airbnb world because he just literally started buying regular properties all across Atlanta with no regard to, you know, um, I incidentally, one of his best properties isn't in Atlanta. It's like in Blue Ridge. And this place was the one that got booked the most, but it was also the first property to sell. So so with these layoffs impacting remote workers, because once again, the economy is adding jobs, but we must look at what type of jobs are being added. Are these six figure jobs? Are these minimum wage jobs? Are these service sector jobs? And I would tell you that they're service sector jobs. These are under $15 an hour jobs. And this is where the economy is struggling to hire people because due to the coziness of the pandemic, being able to live somewhere, get enhanced unemployment, get a direct stimulus check. They can't foreclose on you. They can't evict you. They weren't repossessing your car. People got kind of cozy. They got kind of like, well, I like this. I like not having to be responsible and nothing bad happens. I like this. So a lot of people got really, really addicted to this situation of being able to live without worrying about bad things happening in the economy. And all of that's coming to an end. The evictions. Uh, I know of another person, we're not friends, but I know of him through another real estate investor, investor who bought a lot of hood properties and his eviction rate is now at 50%. 50% of the people who occupy his rentals, he's having to evict. And it's quite messy, it's quite nasty because when you evict someone, a lot of times the property is trashed and he's got one property where they literally poured cement down the toilets cement. I'm not kidding. So 2023, we're going to see more layoffs. We're going to see more of a collapse in the real estate market. We're going to see more houses come on the market. And 
I'm, I'm going to stick by this because I keep saying this. I don't think that we're going to have a nationwide crash. We're going to have a crash in the areas where real estate skyrocketed, where real estate just went bananas. That's where we're going to have these huge corrections and crashes. But right now I was looking in Birmingham. You can buy a house for 200K. Um, there's other areas of the country where you can still get a house for 200K because these places did not explode with pricing like other areas did. So once again, understand what is going on, understand what is happening and understand that this it's just the beginning. It's going to get worse. It's going to get much worse. And I'm still waiting on the diesel shortage to rear its ugly head because I haven't seen it yet. I don't think it's going to happen.